Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tommy. I'm a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. What I do in this type of videos is to synthesize the classes I have at the university so then I can explain and teach you the best and most valuable information you need to know. We're going to continue today the clinical nutrition series of videos and we're going to talk about different pathologies in the therapy, the most common ones. So let's view them one by one. Let's begin. Starting with cancer. Cancer in the gastrointestinal tube causes malnutrition. Why? Because of the tumor localization, for example. In the stomach, it causes an early satiety. In the esophagus, a dysphagia. In the colon, occlusives. And in the pancreas, a pancreatitis. Inflammatory response mediated with cytokines PIF and LMF. And also metabolic alterations. Cachexia, with a higher energy expenditure, higher protein synthesis, and higher glucose turnover, which uh, is something that differs from uh, malnutrition, really. We're going to see that in a minute. Surgery, metabolic alterations and the structural changes, radiotherapy, intestinal mucosa inflammation, dysgeusia, trismus and erythritis. Chemotherapy causes nausea and vomits, mainly, and the biological therapy has a lower toxicity. Consequences, well, cachexia malnutrition, cachexia, weight loss higher than 5% in 6 months, a low body mass index below 20 and sarcopenia with uh, weight loss over 2%. Oncologic, nutritional and pharmacologic treatment are needed with Magistrol 300 mg. Malnutrition, low muscle mass, malabsorption, low respiration and lower heart contraction and also lower cellular immunity. Clinical operations for the cancer, diagnosis, we're going to use the screening M UST must and we have to say that the high risk cancer is in the cancer in the head the neck stomach and throat but the worst is the gastrointestinal tube cancer plus a bone marrow transplantation that's the worst case scenario the treatment talking about nutrition um normal caloric diet 30 kilocalories per kilogram per day higher protein diet it's needed 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram per day water one milliliter per kilocalorie and in the isocaloric diets we use an 80 percent of free water so from coming from uh, water we drink from liquids and in the hypercaloric diets we lower that number to 30 50 so the other percentage comes from the water trapped in the food and we do not uh, give uh, micronutrients supplementation we have to get them from the diet pharmacronutrients enriched in arginine and glutamine, they tend to be together, as well as in omega-3s and nucleotides. They improve the situation here. The BHMB is a compound that is also useful because it increases the muscle synthesis, as well as the glutamine, they are anabolic indeed, and we must use them to fight the cancer. The goal here is to lower the inflammation, to increase the metabolism and avoid the malnutrition. Therefore, we want the muscle. A division nutrition only if needed. Now let's take a look at diabetes. Diabetes is the hyperglycemia that alters the wall metabolism and it has long-term complications. There are several types of diabetes. Type 1, insulin dependent. We do not produce insulin at all. Type 2, the insulin resistance. When we spike our insulin so much that uh, its function is not uh, efficient anymore. The gestational, which is a type 2 in uh, women, pregnant women and uh, other types as well. Diagnosis, basal glycemia over 126 uh, and uh, also a venous plasma glycemia over 200 milligrams per deciliter. We talked about this thing of pre-diabetes, which is indeed an early stage of insulin resistance, when you have a basal glycemia between 100 and 125. The treatment is focused on the patient to avoid the complications and improve the life quality. The Hemoglobin N1C, which is the one in charge of uh, letting us know how was the glycemia in the last three months, should be around uh, 6.5, that's the perfect amount. In the diabetes type 1, we can use the basal bolus therapy using uh, multiple doses or the continuous insulin infusion system to give insulin at the right time at the right quantities which is indeed an automated bionic pancreas it's the best thing a diabetic type 1 can get the non-pharmacological treatment is using the nutritional therapy which we're going to see now physical exercise and therapeutic education nutritional therapy the goals are individual of course 
we have to individualize and, and we cannot generalize in this type of diseases. Nutritional education, gastronomic pleasure, of course. We still want to have some pleasure from food. Psychosomatic improvement and also functional capacity and quality of life. Caloric needs, calculated with harris benedict multiplied by the exercise, and we apply a reduction according to the body mass index. Macronutrient distribution, there is no ideal percentage, but we say that carbohydrates can be between 40 and 65, but the low carb can also work, so low carb would be less than 130 grams per day. We can use these two strategies, the portion count, so a portion of carbohydrates equals X amount of food only in the type 1 and the exchange diet in the type 2. This is separating the foods in uh, six groups and one portion of carbohydrates is uh, 10 grams of carbs. Then we also take a look at the glycemic index. So from 0 to 55 is low, berries for example, from 55 to 70 is medium, potatoes, and from 70 to 100 is high, white rice. Proteins from 15 to 20, preferably coming from plants, lean meat and fish over red meat and restriction only in renal problems fat from 20 to 35 and there are no specific recommendations so general recommendations patterns so what diet pattern are you following stick to your type of diet mediterranean diet pattern continue to follow it vegetarian it is even recommended to follow a vegetarian way of eating vegan not to be missed, so if you are a vegan, you are a diabetic, you must continue be doing uh, veganism until uh, someone tells you to stop. Intermittent fasting is also recommended. The myths are that there are no foods for diabetics, so myth busted, there are no foods for diabetics, but you can take uh, meal replacements with some formulas. Alcohol is not prohibited in moderate amounts, but it's not recommended. I definitely not recommend it. Sweetness, sucrose is fine if adjusted, but not recommended. Artificial caloric are not recommended. These are fructose and polyols. Fructose causes lipid profile problems and polyols are nosmotic diarrhea. A caloric artificial sweetness are recommended, but you do not have to abuse them. Incretins are the type of drugs based on the glucagon. Indeed, this is the GIP and GLP-1. Glucagon-like uh, peptide 1, which uh, lowers the hunger levels. It is used to treat diabetes with obesity. And now the gestational diabetes. So, 1 in 6 women are affected in the 24th week. They have hormonal system set to accumulate, and therefore insulin resistance can occur. This is done because they have to accumulate the nutrients for the fetus. We do a screening here, the O'Sullivan test, providing uh, 50 grams of glucose fasting is not needed. After 60 minutes we check the glycemia and if it is over 140 we have to continue doing more tests. Another test is an oral glucose overload with 100 grams of glucose and uh, it has to be fasted 8 to 14 hours. After 60 minutes we check the glycemia and if it is over 190 then it is positive. Complications, big fetus, uh, maybe premature as well, and a possible type 2 diabetes in the future. The treatment for the gestational diabetes is uh, with 5 to 6 meals uh, per day, so lower quantities, higher intakes, no fasting, more than 2000 calories per day, and uh, carbohydrates 50%, fat 30 and protein 20. Insulin if needed, but uh, should not be the case, and no metformin for these people. Cardiovascular risk now. So we have the, these lipidemias. Here we have to say that there are no correct cholesterol levels. Less than uh, 10 of LDL equals death. The definition of this lipidemia is basically elevated blood fats, high cholesterol, high triglycerides or low HDL as well. Hypercholesterolemia, and the indicators are the xanthomas, the xanthelasma or the corneal arc. Hypertriglyceridemias, and the indicators are the eruptive xanthomas, retinal lipemia, and the milky serum. Triglycerides, they create the fat indeed, and the blood starts to become uh, a sort of milk. And the mix of these lipidemias are um, the combination of the two. Two types here, the primary type, which is genetic, and the secondary type, which is treatable and normalizable. Metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance risk disease. The indicators are the blood glucose over 100, blood pressure over 130, 85, 
triglycerides over 150 an HDL less than 14 men and less than 15 women and a waist over 102 centimeters in men and over 88 centimeters in women lipid profile we have to check the lipid profile to see if there is a metabolic syndrome we have to keep in mind the variation of fasting triglycerides in 12 hours and uh, daily fluctuations now recently they are starting to take a look uh, also at lipoprotein a values ldl cholesterol is calculated with the freda wells formula and we say that the very low density lipoprotein is the equal of a fifth of the number of triglycerides so here comes the the concept of no hdl because these two parameters indeed are not really measured they are calculated from a formula drugs to treat the metabolic syndrome statins cholesterol absorption inhibitors anion exchange resins mempedoic acid anti-pcsk9 monoclonal antibodies fibrates omega-3 fatty acids to replace the dietary triglycerides and the inclycerin known drug changes of course the lifestyle healthy habits diet general recommendations low saturated fat low in cholesterol no alcohol using a sort of mediterranean way of eating if we lower the weight the triglycerides will uh, lower it a bit if we do physical exercise there is a little decrease in triglycerides if you use phytosterols though there is a lower cholesterol absorption because there is a competition there soy protein instead of animal protein fiber will lower the cholesterol absorption and the red yeast rice is similar to statins there are also other compounds used such as polycosanoids and berberine then high blood pressure so it's quite tricky to define a high blood pressure because some authors say 120 80 others say 130 85 and i think it's more like 140 85 140 90 millimeters of mercury again depending on the author and literature the types are primary or genetic or secondary or treatable blood pressure variation because it's not the same in the clinic as at home normal tension is when you have uh, normal tension both in the clinic and at home white coat hypertension when you have a higher blood pressure in the clinic and a mass hypertension when you have a higher blood pressure at home this is the most dangerous one and the real hypertension well both treatment the diet of course limit the salt in this is not really the salt but the sodium so they say less than five grams a day and that's more or less 2.4 grams of sodium per day lifestyle changes no smoking no alcohol physical exercise and lower the weight especially in overweight and obese people and now let's take a look at the central nervous system pathologies so we have the stroke the dementia and the epilepsy stroke is no blood to the brain and there is a necrosis of the affected area indeed we use the fibrinolysis to stop the stroke because the fibrinolysis restarts the circulation of the blood the stroke is the first cause of adult disability and the second cause of dementia which we're going to see in a bit it, there is an increased risk of malnutrition because you can develop dysphagia and aspiration pneumonia because uh, it affects the brain screening diagnosis and special cases and when there is dysphagia we have to take a look at efficacy and safety first treatment adapted oral diet textured to the individual if they have dysphagia they do not tolerate liquids chances are they are going to tolerate way more semi-solid semi-liquid uh, textures interior nutrition and also the supplemented oral diet with uh, oral supplementation rehabilitation we have to re-educate the patient and uh, also talk to the family we have to tell them about the posture when eating so to eat uh, upright and not uh, lying down and uh, when uh, swallowing it is preferable to do it with the head forward then dementia there is high risk of weight loss because of malnutrition and malnutrition happens because there is not eating due to dysphagia forgetfulness confusion or maybe incapacity they forget how to eat there is also here a problem which is the caregiver syndrome pneumonia and urinary tract infections are causing the sepsis there is the dietary evaluation and nutritional management very important to do here we have to watch out for medication and food viscosity especially if they have dysphagia in the initial phases of dementia we give them proper diets normal diets with a nutritional quality 
In the advanced dementia though, we have to question ourselves if the nutritional support is needed and uh, we have to check if there are advanced directives and we talk to the family because if the life expectancy is lower than two three months then uh, it's preferable to not really give them uh, an artificial nutrition parental one especially and then last but not least epilepsy we have here a brain activity alteration that causes seizures and a very famous diet here that treats uh, epilepsy is the ketogenic diet which is high in fat moderate in proteins and lower in carbs it tends to prefer medium chain triglycerides over long chain triglycerides and there are several types the main ones are the classic the 4-1 so 90% of fat the classic free one also 80% of fat so 80% of the calories come from fat keto drastically reduces seizures to the point that 50% of the individuals that try keto they decrease the seizures by half one third of them they lower it by 90% and 3 to 10% have no seizures at all. Of course, this diet is not recommended when the fat cannot be metabolized in uh, a gold bladder problems, for example. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends and family so they can know this knowledge as well. You can find this diagram by clicking the first link in the description down below and uh, study it very well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!